Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today I'm doing another one of these subscriber designs videos. And I'm just gonna look at a bunch of stuff today, because um, I often pick a small thing and a big thing, but I've just picked a bunch of stuff. So the first thing we're looking at is a J20, sent to me by a guy called Joseph, and it is based on the J20, the, um, uh, the Chinese fighter jet. And it's pretty cool, so let's just fly this around a bit. It's got a couple of afterburning turbojets. It looks quite a lot like it, it's very nicely done. It's fully stock. Um, which I didn't think it was at first until I actually looked at this. I thought this was a modded part, but it's actually just a nicely crafted um, part, which looks a lot like the intakes actually on the J20. And then it's got an interestingly built ray dome. And all of this. So yeah, let's take off. It's also got a fairly interesting wing setup. It's got kind of a big, almost delta wing. And then kind of four, uh, I don't know what you call it, four slanted... Um, rear canards and two at the front, which makes it insanely maneuverable. I'm going to crash this instantly, aren't I? Yep. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, it'll still fly. <laughs> Let's throw the afterburners on. That was insane. That was, I thought it would crash instantly. But yes, so let's just fly this around a bit, see what it does. Um, I am going to refer to launch so that it's actually... <laughs> <laughs> has all of its wings, but that was pretty cool. It just like clipped the ground. Usually when stuff hits the ground, it explodes. But yeah, it's fully stock, so there's no weapons on it. I think everything I'm looking at today is stock. I like to kind of go between looking at stock things and spacey things and BD armory things. I get a lot of BD armory things. And to the guy who sent me like 18 uh, vehicles, I've realized that uh, I actually didn't put that in the right folder, so I haven't looked at it. I know you sent it to me a while ago, but I will be looking at them, and I think that's cool. They're probably going to get some videos out of that. Yeah, the guy sent me like 18 BD armory things. And um, that was insane, I realized I didn't look at it. So yeah, my standard test for checking out maneuverability is just trying to circle the VAB. And this does so well that I actually... Ooh! So well that I can't actually circle the VAB because it turns too tightly. Which is really cool. So we'll try that again, then I might fly it through the bridge, and then we'll move on. So, toggle mode. I'm going to just keep the afterburners on the whole time. It's also used air intakes back here to... Um, Kind of just the, these structural air intakes, they seem to use, to use a lot to ooh, <laughs> make the aesthetic things. Does need SAS on. Um, you can see this is kind of like the aesthetic of the back of the jet, which is really well done. It's just a really, I mean, it's not the prettiest of um, aircraft. There's a bunch of struts on it, and you know, obviously, wings and KSP tend to look weird, but it is, but it is very nicely designed. I do very much like it. Um, and it has a bunch of control surfaces. Um, although, the only problem is they all do everything, uh, so it's very pitchy. I think he did send some um, instructions on how I should actually set up the um, control services, but I may have kind of skimmed them. I tend to skim emails. If you put a lot of detail in an email, I may just skim it. But yeah, you can see how unbelievably maneuverable this is. It just circles the VAB with no effort. I reckon if actually, if I pull up a bit, and I could probably circle the helipad on the VAB. Um, this is how I tend to test maneuverability of planes and also get good at precision flying. Oh, oh no, yeah, see, the only problem, oh, <laughs> just saved it, is when you're pitching and you try to roll when all the control surfaces do the same thing, it doesn't really work. Um, so you want to use the some of the control surfaces for rolling and some for pitching. Just a piece of advice. But yeah, pretty cool plane. Anyway, let's... Uh, I'm going to try and fly it through the bridge, but I kind of doubt that it'll work. Oh my god. Okay, we're going this way. Why did I just do... <laughs> okay, yeah, that was dumb. Let's move on to the next thing. So, the next thing we're looking at is the Upriser Mark II, sent to me from um, by AM Craft, and it is a VTOL, an interesting looking VTOL. It's using these giant tail fins as uh, main wings, and it's using an afterburning engine for its uh, lifting engine and for its main engine, which is interesting because when you fire up, the lifting engine, it doesn't do a ton, and then you toggle the mode, and uh, and it lifts off quite well. Okay, it does need to throttle up a bit. Oh, I'm on half throttle. But yeah, uh, after burning engine as a VTOL gives you quite a lot of thrust. Quite a bit. Quite a, quite a bit of thrust. So yeah, it's a pretty cool VTOL. I really like it. It's, really, it's nice and simple, and it's, it, it's a little squirrely. I'm actually going to make sure... Oh, these don't roll. That's interesting. These are for pit. Yeah. What an interesting design. Okay, yeah, but it's very flippy. Um, oh, oh, but luckily when it flips, you can just fire up the VTOL engine and it solves it. What I'd do is I'd set these to be roll and this to be pitch. Might roll a little too much then. 
But uh, yeah, anyway, um, so obviously this is a VTOL, so the standard test, you'd think, would be to land on top of the VAB. So that's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to throttle that down, throttle this one up. We're a little high, actually, so I'm going to probably swan dive onto it, and then, uh, yeah, yeah, we're way too high up. So what I'm going to do is something really stupid. Um, I'm going to do this. Yeah, that ought to do it. And then, oh, oh, okay, that was dumb. Why did I do that? <laughs> Pull out the gear. Um, yeah, that luckily managed to kill most of my altitude. And this has a really good thrust to weight ratio on the VTOL, which means I've got a lot of uh, a lot of space to play with. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is quite maneuverable, which is nice, even in VTOL mode, which is really good. It looks like I'm losing control, but I'm actually having a relatively easy time doing this. It does have parachutes, but I feel like that would be super lame. And look at that, it just hovers effortless, effort, effort, effortlessly. Oh my god, I can't talk today. I've been recording a lot all weekend because it is Christmas soon and I'm leaving my desktop PC. So, But yeah, this was super effortless, actually first time landing on the VAB, and I'm sure it'll bounce up. Oh no, see? Look how awesome that is. It just... Just so easy. So you think it at AM Graph. This is probably one of the uh, easiest VTOLs I've ever used. It is a little bit crazy to fly, but it does work quite nicely. And you know what? You know, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to fly this through through the bridge, because um, it because it's just I, I may crash it, and I am flying it the dumb way. Um, I should be going through it the other way, which I might end up doing just in case I fall down. Okay, okay, I can do this. I can do this. I got I, I got this. I got this. I got this. I got this. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> dinged it. Okay, if I'd been slightly less terrible, that would have worked. All right, next. Okay, so keeping with the theme of stock vehicles, we're looking at something called the AA Nimble, sent to me by Joseph, omitting second names. Um, and it's just like a little fighter plane, and it's stock, and it actually has a few missiles on it. They're fairly standard missiles. They are kind of cool. Most people would just put an engine on the back, but this uses two of these Rockamax, um radial engines and three wings so they are actually pretty interesting and i think these might be guided no maybe not maybe they're not guided missiles but still they're done fire missiles and they're pretty cool and i like the design of the fighter as well because it's used kind of i don't know it's it, is there a oh there is an afterburner button nice um oh good job me <laughs> i just like how the um oh fuck let's revert to launch yeah, I just quite like how the fighter looks, because it's got its wings, and then it's got its engines mounted in its wings. And it has lots of nice rises and, fall, uh, rises and falls to the kind of contour. It kind of contours a lot on the body, is what I was trying to say. I just like the design. It's nice. Um, I like stuff like this, where it's kind of very contoured and looks very cool. Um, so yeah, let's go and test out these missiles a bit. I think you just fire them with the um, staging button. Ho! Oh, yeah, it rolls quite a lot. Oh my god. Maybe rolls a little too much. I might um, stop the get, uh, the engines from rolling because they uh, they're a little insane. Um, they're they're yeah, a little a little insane. So let's bring the gimbal down to like this on them. Um, I might bring it back up for like trying to circle the VAB, but uh, yeah, it, the control surfaces are good enough. It doesn't have a ton of control surfaces. It pretty much just has the wings at the back, um, which is good. Except it brings you with this weird problem of rolling and pitching the same um, same controls, which is quite difficult. So I'm going to actually turn off a bunch of these for... Oh, these are, actually don't roll. Interesting. Um, okay, that's quite well designed then. That's, good. that's some, good, some good shit. Um, but it does roll quite a lot. It is very, it's a very rolly aircraft. Anyway, let's fire off some of these missiles um, at the VAB. And... Uh, see if we can hit it, and then maybe I'll hit that tank down there. I've kept that tank from that episode because it's just a good target. Okay, go! Oh, nice, they nailed the VAB. That was good! We hit a... T oh my god, this is insane. It rolls so much! Maybe I should have... Oh, jeez, anyway. <laughs> maybe I'd turn roll off on these as well, and then bring the limiter back up on there, and it just rolls with the engines? That's a little more handleable, actually. I'm going to crash it into the ground. It's going to suck. Okay. <laughs> well, that's fine, because I want to try and shoot that tank. Um, it's kind of hard to actually hit small things with uh, dumbfire missiles, because they're hard to guide, and they have a lot of fall, and it's just generally kind of difficult. So, yeah, anyway. 
Let's take off and do this again. Yeah, it's a little squirrely, a little hard to control, uh, but I like the uh, but I like the look of it, and I like the missiles, uh, the missiles. They're quite they're quite interesting. Um, yeah. So anyway, let's get headed towards that tank. Maybe just turn the engines off. Maybe they. Oh wait, I need to throttle up though to fire the missiles. But I'll do that at the last minute. Um, so I'm sort of Miriana again for attacking your tank, as I seem to be doing frequently these days. There you go. Ooh. I suck at things. In fairness, though, if they went straight, they would have totally hit. I mean, that guy's scared right now. They didn't go quite straight, which was weird. Um, but yeah, anyway, cool little fighter, a little squirrely, but I like it very much. So thank you to Joseph for this. Um, I do very much like it when I get stock weaponry. It's just a nice little... Who? Oh, fuck. Yeah, I, I suck at things. Oh, there you go. Some stuff survived. So yeah, anyway, let's move on to the next thing. So, uh, the next thing we're looking at is another thing from Joseph, actually, who just sent me the very squirrely fighter. It's a heavy SSTO, and apparently it can take a lot of fuel to orbit. Well, a lot of mass to orbit. So I've got an 18-ton payload in here, which apparently should work quite well. I may not have looked at the action group, so this is going to be pretty rough. But hey, let's test it out. It's pretty cool, because it's actually a triplane. Um, you can see that it has this three-wing setup, which makes it a triplane, like the fighters of old, which is pretty cool. Um, I just quite like how uh, these jut out as well, the um, shock cone intakes, those are pretty cool. Oh, and they're actually mounted on Mark II parts, that's pretty cool! I would like the look of it, it's a nice uh, thing, it's got two, it's got like biplane canards at the front as well, little wing strike, it's great. Um, oh, definitely need the SAS on, I often forget to turn that on. Um, did just test it, doesn't take off with that payload in the cargo bay because it's aerodynamically unstable like that, which might make coming back kind of hard, but I guess we'll see. Um, I think it might be burning my payload fuel. I don't want it to do that. No, it won't. Well, anyway, let's make sure it doesn't. Okay, so yeah, if I can fly this well, it might well get to orbit, which would be rather interesting. And then it has this engine, which is pretty cool, but um, I'm thinking, does it need that? Because rapier engines? Transition to maybe it's just more efficient uh, generates electric charge that kind of thing. I guess we'll see I'm wondering at what point editing me will decide that this needs to be uh, four times time accelerate and uh, <laughs> And post commentary that'd be right now past me So yes, here we are in post commentary and four times time accelerate and we're taking this on to orbit I discovered a few uh, cool things about this um, vehicle It turns out there are action groups to turn off sets of engines so you can turn off the outer four rapier engines and the inner four rapier engines independently which gives you a lot of control which I really like this is a really cool plane it's got about 18 tons in the cargo bay right now and this is my first time flying it so it might be a little tricky and I'm not the best with SSTOs I haven't really done it that much in a while because Road to Exploration is a very rocket based series but anyway at some point um, I'm probably gonna actually fire up the liquid fuel and oxidizer a little early just to push me up to about 400 meters per second because that's a sweet spot for these rapier engines. Um, so you'll see I'm transitioning, well I briefly transitioned there just to see. But yeah, I'm firing up the Poodle engine so that I can push myself up to about 400 meters per second so I get more thrust out of these engines and can carry on with my journey. I really probably should have done that lower down in the atmosphere to save fuel, but you know, I wasn't really thinking, I didn't know exactly how much thrust to weight ratio this had. But yeah, you can see the engines are ramping up in thrust now, and we're gaining altitude and speed incredibly fast. Um, but obviously that is partly because we're at four times time accelerating. So anyway, yes, let's push our way on into orbit now. Uh, we're at 20 kilometers, getting to about a kilometer per second. Hopefully we'll be able to get to the magic 1100 meters per second before we switch over to liquid fuel and oxidizer. I'm going to use all of the engines to push me on into orbit with liquid fuel and oxidizer. Um, I imagine there's still quite a lot of drag on this because it's using three um, wings. Uh, but yes, there we go. We've transitioned over now. I'm going to push our periapsis up. I'm not going to burn too vertically because I don't want to bleed off too much velocity to drag, but I probably could have gone a little steeper right now because um, I'm spending probably too much time in the atmosphere. But anyway, there we go. We've got a nice apoapsis. We've got a bunch of fuel left. Um, it's a little bit um, deceiving because I do have fuel in the cargo bay. So it's, yeah, the thing in the top right will probably lie to you. Anyway, when I do do this, I um, was just playing with the action groups there. Pretty cool, really like that detail. Um, so yeah, the problem is though, I just miss orbit, um, and that's, yeah, 
I run out of oxidizer, basically, which is, yeah, totally my fault. Um, but yeah, we almost made Orbit, and thank you to Joseph for sending to the, me this. It is really cool. Sorry I failed to make, make Orbit and didn't return because I didn't make Orbit. But hey, anyway, so I hope you've enjoyed this. This is at the end of the video now. So if you'd like to go check out a couple more videos, I'm having a hard time placing this because I'm recording this way in advance, but let's say go check out my video on Dave Defeat Source, which is a really great game that came out in like 2005, which is what Dave Infamy was kind of based on, and I really like it. And it was a lot of fun, even for a 2005 game. And also, uh, quite a while back there was a live stream I did which I uploaded to um, YouTube which you should totally check out I uh, stream about once a month and yeah it's a lot of fun uh, there are also links to my Twitter Twitch and Patreon in the description if you're interested but as always I hope you've enjoyed this this has been Caspi with Tape I'll see you next time